Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh brothers um, I just quickly want to establish something I really, I told the brothers I really don't like this idea of me sitting here Because even though like, anyone could come out to you guys and say The very cliche thing, I'm no better than you or whatever But wallah, genuinely I don't like sitting here Because it makes me look as if I'm at a level of, of, of piety or whatever And you guys are not, so wallah, that is not the case I'm only sitting here because of the camera And Allah is my witness that I really don't want to sit here. I want to sit on the floor. But inshallah, if, if anything happens next time, I'll be sitting on the floor, inshallah. So um, another thing I wanted to establish is that in the talk I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be saying the word us a lot because we all fall short in these things. And no person can ever say you, um, him, her. So there's going to be, the word us is going to be mentioned a lot because all of us are humans and it's in our nature to fall into these kind of things. And I just wanted to say, to say I love each and every one of you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that love other than for the sake of Allah is, 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 is not correct. So I ask Allah to give you all Jannah and increase you in knowledge, I mean. And the talk I'm going to be giving today is about repentance. And this is something that we all um, doubt when it comes to our religion. You know, because we are young, we think that Allah is, uh, uh, we, we doubt Allah's mercy and we think because we are young, we indulge in so much sins and we get ourselves into so much trouble that we have this mentality of Allah's not going to forgive me, I'm just a sinner. What's the point? What's the point of repenting? Uh, let me live my life a little bit. People tell you, when, when people want to see you to start practicing, they tell you what? They tell you you're young, live a little bro, uh, enjoy your life, why are you always stressing? You know, repent when you're older. You hear these things a lot and it's very common. So one thing I wanted to establish today is repentance. You see, I come from a background where there's a lot of things that you guys can relate to. For example, I had this talk with my cousin about two weeks ago. And my cousin, he just came out of jail. And when I tell you, this guy's been through so much. I'm thinking, how can you not repent after you've been through that much? This guy came out of jail. He got shot seven times. He got stabbed up. People came to his house, like he, he, he's, he's a crazy person. People came to his house in front of his own mum, asking for him. Next day, he went back to, to, to his ops, as us lot call it. He went back to his ops. He went to each and every one of their house, shot up the house, went back in prison, came out of prison. And this guy still has not made repentance. Even though he was at a life and death situation. The same thing with my brother. And me growing up, every single day I saw mum, my mum crying. And I was brought up in the same environment as my brother and my cousin. Obviously, this is family. These are people that I'm sleeping with every day. And seeing your mum cry is not nice. Anyone who's seen their mum cry will know the feeling. So I thought to myself, I can't be on the same wavelength as my brother and my cousin. Cool, no problem. I got love for them. They're my family. But in the long term, I can't think like them. I can't do what they're doing. Because they're either going to leave me locked up, leave me dead, and make my entire family see my mum cry every day for the losses she had. So this idea of repentance plays a big part in my life because if I didn't repent, and if I didn't tell my cousin to repent, which he still not repented, then Allahu A'lam where I would be, where my cousin would be, and where everybody else who doubts repentance would be. So I wanted to give an example of what repentance is like. You see, repentance is like an exchange shop. See when you go CEX and you're used to convert your games and you get peas. It's like that. Repentance is like that. Imagine the exchange shop to be Allah's mercy now. You go into the shop, you have two bags with you. You're a sinner. You have two bags with you. In the first bag, you have what? You have all your evil deeds, all your sins in the first bag. In the second bag, you have sincerity. You have ikhlas. So you walk into the shop. And remember I said the shop is Allah's mercy. You walk into the shop, you put your two bags down. Allah takes your sins and he's seen that you came with sincerity. You see, both these bags go hand in hand. One can't work without the other. If you're coming with sins, with no sincerity, what's going to happen can't happen. And if you're coming with sincerity, but you're coming short in sins without the intention of repenting, what, what's going to happen can't happen. And what's going to happen? You walk into the shop. Remember, the shop is the last mercy, this exchange shop. You have your bag full of sins, and you have your ikhlas, you have your sincerity here. You put both down on the table. Allah takes your sins, and He takes your what? He takes your sincerity. 
He takes both because he's seen that you came with sincerity, you came with ikhlas. And what did he do? He gives you back two bags. He gives you back hidayah, he gives you back guidance, and he gives you back good deeds. Why? Because he came with sincerity. Allah tells us in Surah Furqan, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَبَدُّلُ اللَّهُ سَيَّآتِهِمْ Hasanat. Allah will exchange your sins into good deeds if you come with what? If you come with sincere repentance. You know, you committed a sin, you've been talking to girls, you've been burning weed, you've been doing whatever, whatever it is you may be doing, you don't have to tell anyone, but in your heart you hate it. And secretly at night you put your prayer mat out, you go into Allah saying, Oh Allah, forgive me, I've committed sin. Oh Allah, I've done this. Oh Allah, I've done that. You hate the sin in your heart and you really regret it. And you're coming to Allah now, as Allah descends in the last feather of the night to the lowest heaven. You're making dua sincerely from your heart. Allah is seeing that you've regretted this. And you're coming with sincerity and you're really repenting when everybody is asleep. At the time when everyone is asleep, that's when Allah descends to the lowest, to the lowest heaven. It's the last feather of the night. You're making dua. Allah sees you're sincere. And Allah sees that you regret what you've done. Wallahi, He will forgive you. Wallahi, He will forgive you. Allah feels shy. When his slave puts his hand in the sky, when his slave puts his hand in the air and makes dua, Allah feels shy to reject the dua. Wallah, me personally, I've seen wonders. I'll give you an example. For example, when I first started practicing, it was last year. Last year, I was broke. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have money. The first dua I made, oh Allah, please allow me to go to Umrah. Please. Please, because I spoke to some brothers and they told me, Akhi, the first thing you need to do, go Umrah, trust me. Umrah alone will give you a different insight as to what this life is really about. I didn't have money, I was broke. I made dua, Allah, please, like, I don't know how. And in, in, in my situation at the time, there was no way I was able to get money. There's absolutely no way, no way. I made dua, I said, Allah, please give me a way to go to Umrah and give me a way to change my life. I made this dua last Friday of the night. I can't hear nothing in my house, everyone's sleeping. I'm there praying, I'm making dua to Allah from my heart. I've never made dua like this in my life. Wallahi, wallahi. The next week, my sister comes to me. My sister comes to me. She tells me, yeah, I've got tickets. We're going Umrah. Imagine, there's no way I could have gotten money. There's no way. My, my situation at the time was, was the peakest. There's no way I could have gotten money. My sister comes to me and tells me, what? Come, we're going Umrah. I went there, visit my family. Walk in. Make my dua. Oh Allah, protect us from the hellfire as soon as I see the Kaaba. As soon as you see the Kaaba, Allah, the feeling that was in my heart was something else I never felt in my life. And you know, I was a person that always used to think, yeah, you go Umrah, take a picture with the Kaaba, pretend your heart's been, been, uh, been like, through this next feeling. Like, I always thought it was cliche, you know, everyone that says they've been to Umrah, I thought it's become like a, like, like a trend. You go Umrah, you come back, oh yeah, actually, man, subhanAllah, it was mad. It was crazy, man. I can't describe the feeling, you know? I thought it was, everyone just putting on an act, I thought it, was, it, it wasn't legit. When you see the Kaaba, the feeling in your heart, you can't even describe. Wallahi. And this leads me to another point about sincerity. Wallahi, sincerity is, is very key. And a lot of us lack this because, okay, let me give you another example. For example, if you see someone praying in the masjid now, somebody's praying in the masjid, yeah? And a noble, forget the masjid, you're praying at home, your mum or your dad walks in, yeah? You're praying by yourself, but the moment your mum and dad walk in, what do you do? All, all of us, we fall short in this, what, what do you do? You, you're longer in sujood, you're, you're reciting more beautifully, you're reciting slower, you're showing your parents, oh yeah, I'm taking care of my salah, I'm praying. We, we lose that sincerity, because someone stepped in the room now. Our, our, our ikhlas that was supposed to be for Allah, only now, we kind of loved the attention from people, you know? We was praying, we was praying fast, we were doing a Formula One thing. Your mum and your dad walks in, all of a sudden, slow motion. Wallahi, like, this, 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 this is very common, I used to do this, bro. And wallahi, another, another thing that I remember, being young, well, I'm still young, I'm 18, but being young, you go, your parents tell you, yeah, go pray. And the clock you haven't made with all. So they told you go make wudu. Wallahi, I've done this a million times. May Allah forgive me, I mean. I jump in the toilet, I do fake wudu, bro. Like, my splashing, my hair, my ears, my arms, my feet. I come out looking like I came from Tidal Wave, you know, full pot, the ride, bro. I, I, wallahi, I'm telling you, yeah. And I, and I pray after. 
then only like last year I realized if only I'd prayed all my salah without making that fake wudu, how many like good deeds would I have gotten? How many sins would I have just thrown away? Like the time I spent doing that fake wudu, I could have actually made wudu and prayed Allah and speak, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? So Allah, sincerity here, we, we, we lack it a lot. Wallahi, we lack it a lot and, and it's a big, 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 big problem. And going back to the point where I say we doubt Allah's mercy too much because we think we're too much of sinners to repent. No matter what we're doing, if we're linking girls, if we're going to clubs, if we're smoking weed, we're getting drunk, we're, 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 in, we're with these bad, bad guys, there's bad influence everywhere. No matter what we, or we've already come, come of what? We've already come of a preconceived notion that, okay, Allah's not forg gonna forgive me, I'm just a sinner. Wallahi, this is wrong, and this could actually take you out of the fold of Islam because you are now disbelieving in Allah's mercy. That's a form of kufr. Wallahi, Allah tells us in many places in the Quran, this is the issue of repentance, I, I always say this, the issue of repentance is something that can be spoken about for, for, for a very long time. There's this ayat dashed around all over the Quran. Ayat here, ayat here, hadith here, hadith there. You know, many ayat regarding the issue of repentance. Allah says in Surah Al-Zumr, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ ذَنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيكُمُ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَنْصُرُونَ Allah says, O oh my slaves who have transgressed themselves by doing evil deeds. He's talking to us. He's talking to us, the sinners. He says, O oh my slaves who have transgressed themselves by doing evil deeds. 247, you're doing evil deeds, you're doing sins. He says, Do not despair the mercy of Allah. لا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رحمة الله. What does he say next? Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. You've got a Lord like this telling you, come. You're committing sins, come. Come to me. Come, I'm here. Allah is saying, I will forgive you. Come, come. No matter what you're doing, you're burning zoots, you're getting high. You're, 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 you're running up on your ops, no problem. Stop that, come to me. I forgive all sins. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Innuhu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Indeed, it is he who is the most merciful. What does Allah tell you in the next ayah? Okay, Allah is telling you, cool, it's happy days. Allah is telling you, it's happy days, I will forgive you. Allah now gives you practical help. So now you've repented, you come in a state of repentance, and you don't know what to do now. Allah is giving you direction. Wallahi, this is why the Quran is so special. Because every single thing that Allah tells us to do, He, he gives us practical help. Allah tells you in the next ayah, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُونَ Allah tells you, وَأَنِيبُوا Turn, and turn to your Lord in repentance. The word here, inaba in the Arabic language, it means to turn. Yeah? And submit to him. That's where the root word of Islam comes from. Aslimu. Nowadays you tell a man, bro, what does Islam mean? He tells you, yeah, Islam means peace. Islam does not mean peace. Islam means submission. This religion is, is made for submission. Allah says, I did not create mankind and jinn except that they worship me. This is the purpose of my entire life. If someone comes to you now on the road and he tells you, bro, what's your purpose in life? He told him, I did Allah said, I did not create jinns and mankind except that they worship me. That's your entire purpose in a nutshell. That, that, that's your purpose. So Allah is telling you, وَأَنِيبُوا Turn to your Lord in repentance. وَأَسْلِمُوا And submit. Submit does not mean, yeah, pray one prayer. Miss Duhur, pray Asr, miss Maghrib. Submit, full submission. The same way you're submitting your application form for uni or, or whatever, that's how you submit fully. So submission for, for, for uni, you can't, you can't submit without your college grades, right? It won't work. Submission, full submission, you submit to Allah, you give your full self to Allah. And he says, what? Wa Submit. Allah is showing you now, cool, it's happy days. I forgive all sins. There's Jannah for you. Wallahi, there's Jannah for you. But then what does he say in the next ayah? مِنْ قَبِلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيكُمُ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَنْصُرُونَ Allah is not a pushover. Don't think, yeah, man will burn zoots for my whole life. I'm on road for my whole life. Allah will forgive me later. He knows what's in my heart. I'm not a bad guy. I just like to do this stuff because I'm cool. Don't think that. Allah is not a pushover. He will give you punishment. Allah says, Before the punishment, before the doom comes upon you and you will not be saved. Wallahi, that's exactly how it's worded. And you will not be saved. How much clearer could it be? You will not be saved, there's no help. Everybody on that day will run away from you. Wallahi, there's not a single soul. There's not a single soul who will ask about you except the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yawma yifrur maru wa lakhi wa ummihi wa abi wa sahibtihi wa bini. Wallahi, your own mama will run away from you. On your own mother that created you, that, that, that you were in her belly for nine months, 
your mum will run away from you. Imagine seeing your mum, the person you love the most, run away from you. Why? Because she took some good deeds off you. Every time you shouted at your mum, every time you shouted at your mum, every time you were disrespectful, disrespectful to your mum and she was quiet, she was getting the deeds because she didn't respond to you. And on that day she will run away from you. Why? Because all those deeds that she was getting has led her to, to, to Jannah every time you disrespected her. Your mum will run away from you, your dad will run away from you. Wallahi, your friends, your friends won't even ask about you. Wallahi, your friends will not ask about you. Wallahi, this, this is a serious issue that every time I speak about, I just, it's like I've got a direct mirror in front of myself and I'm looking at myself, I'm asking myself, what am I doing in my life? And Wallahi, if none of you are thinking the same, then you need to think again, what are you doing with your life? Look to your left, look to your right. Are the people around you going to get you to Jannah? Or are the people around you going to get you to Jahannam? What does it look like? What do you think? I don't want you to tell me, just, just think in your head. These companions that you're, you're hanging around, the people that you're hanging around every day in your life, are they going to take you to Jannah or Jahannam? Is that simple? Jannah or Jahannam? Is that simple? I'm not here to water it down, you know? Some speakers, they come. I'm not, I'm not even a speaker. I don't even speak. I only spoke because my brother Abbas told me, Yaqi, come, it's you thing, play football after, no problem. I'm not even a speaker. I'm just telling you, straight up. Now you've got speakers, they, they don't even speak about Tawheed, they don't even speak about nothing. Where they come, they, they, they paint rainbows for you. Oh, Allah forgives all sins. They don't mention nothing about punishment. This is real, this punishment. You think you can come here on this dunya and play games? Allah tells us this, this, this dunya is just amusement. This dunya is just amusement. And it's just, it's just, it's just there. Dunya, this, this, this dunya, this is not our permanent homes. This dunya is temporary. Live on this dunya as if you're a stranger. And the Prophet said, said, what? Glad tidings to the stranger. Live on this dunya as if you are a stranger. This is not your final home. This is not your final home. And I quickly wanted to mention a point that I came across uh, by the very noble uh, Shaykh al Islam ibn al Qayyim al Jawziyah, he mentioned in his book, uh, Madarij al Salikin, I believe it's volume 1, page 143. And he speaks about the issue of repentance and he says, What? Man nazila fi manzilat al tawbati wa qama fi maqamiha. And he carries on and he says, Nazila fi kulli manzilat al Islami. Anybody who resides onto the first stage of repentance, meaning you call your common of repentance now. Shaykh al Islam ibn, uh, ibn al Qayyim, he's explaining this, he's saying, you reside, anyone who resides onto the first stage of repentance will reside onto all the other stages of Islam. Anyone who resides onto the first stage of repentance will reside onto all other stages of Islam. And this is something that we belittle so much, repentance. We always think it's a flower man topic. Like, yeah, repentance, repentance, wallahi. What repentance can do for you, nothing else in this dunya can do for you. If you sincerely repent. And wallahi, this is just something we need to ponder over. And once you reside onto all the other stages of Islam, rack up your good deeds. So now you come with repentance, you change your life, yeah? Cool. Now we need something that's gonna push you and boost your Iman and get you to Jannah. Is that, that's gonna be what? Doing your obligatories, doing your sunnahs, and rack up your good deeds in your mind 24-7. The same way you were trapping, all you think about when you wake up is what? Yeah, man needs to move these O's, man needs to do this, like flip a quick bend, whatever. Whatever you're doing, like flip, flip a quick brick or whatever you're doing. The same way, that's your mentality. You're on this go get away. You're on this go get away. This should be your mentality. Every day, wake up, boom, good deeds. What am I doing today? Am I giving charity? Am I helping in the masjid? Am I hoovering the masjid? What are you doing? Good deeds should be on your. That's, that should be your motto, 24/7. Allah says, "فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ." Allah says, and those on the, He's speaking about the day of judgment here. Allah says, those whose scales are heavy with good deeds on Yom Al Qiyamah is them who will be successful. Wallahi, it will not be anybody else who is successful other than the person who's come with what? Righteous actions. Amal and saliha. So wallahi, this issue of repentance, like I said brothers, keep, keep pondering, keep pondering over this. But wallahi, you see this path? This path of being a practicing Muslim, it's not easy. Not to say I'm anybody righteous, wallahi, I'm, I'm nobody, I'm just like the normal guy you see on the street, wallahi, but when I first wore a thobe, I was in Saudi Arabia, Did this, it was this exact thobe. Wallahi, look, let me stand up for a sec. This exact thobe, it used to come up to here. It used to come up to here, yeah? Below my ankles, it used to come up to here. I was in Saudi Arabia, yeah? And over there, they're, they're fully on this uh, dodgy 
method, this dodgy methodology, let's say, not all of them, some of them. So I was in a tailor shop, I got this thobe tailored, and I was arguing with the guy, he doesn't want to put it below my ankles. He doesn't want to tailor it below my ankles. He's saying, oh, why, you're becoming extreme, blah, 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 wear it below your ankles. I'm telling you, the Prophet said anything below the ankles is in a hellfire. And you're here telling me, you're saying, put it below because it looks nicer? Akhi, wallahi, 10 minutes, I'm debating, forget, forget what I said about the Prophet. 10 minutes, I'm just convincing him, Akhi, please. No, don't worry, I like it, I guess, I like it. I didn't even mention anything about the religion because I didn't want him to think I'm too extreme. This guy is arguing 10 minutes, he wants my thobe below my ankles. I told him, Akhi, the Prophet said anything below the ankles is in hellfire. This guy wanted to put my thobe below my ankles and I'm telling him, the Prophet وسلم, said anything below the ankles is in the hellfire. And he got a next man telling you, don't do this. I'm telling him, the Prophet, the greatest man to walk the face of this earth is telling me this and you're, you're a random guy tailoring, tailoring thobes and you're telling me, no? Like, wallahi, this, this, is, this is ajeeb. Wallahi, you will get people who will mock you. You will get people who cuss you and stick it on you just for being practicing for wearing your thobe above the, uh, below your ankles. Uh, for wearing your thobe above the ankles. For growing your beard. Like they see you do righteous actions, they get envious and shy of you, they start thinking you're extreme. By the way, once you start practicing and you're fully on this wave, the word extreme is going to be here, you left, right, center. Wallahi, but what you got to keep doing is you have to stay motivated. I'm going to end on this. These are, these are two advices that the Salaf gave to the youngsters. Yeah? These are two advices that the Salaf, they gave to the youngsters. Malik ibn Dinar, he said, the khair is in the youngsters. And this statement was narrated by Ibn Baghdadi and is actually pointing out the importance of this stage in your life. If a person truly benefits from this time, it will be something that will benefit you and you will reap its fruits when you're old. For example, he's saying the khair, the good, is all in, in what? It's all in the youngsters. And whatever you learn now, whatever you learn now, you, you, will, you will see its fruits when you're older. For example, the way you grow a plant, you got to put soil, you've got to get sunlight, water, it, and it grows, right? And it blossoms. What you're learning now will make you blossom when you're older. And Sheikh uh, Ibn Uthaymin, he said, the knowledge that remained with us is the knowledge that we learned when we were young. And that is the knowledge that will stay with you. So whatever you learn now, benefit from your youth. Whatever you learn now, that is what will truly stay with you. And the second benefit I wanted to share is the famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam. And he said what? Take care of five things, benefit from five things before five comes to you. Benefit from your youth before old age comes to you. Benefit from your health before sickness. Your wealth before you're poor. Your free time before you become preoccupied. And your life before death. Benefit from these five. And you'll be asked about your life and how you spent it. You'll be asked about your youth and how you utilized it. You'll be asked about your wealth. Where did you get it from? Are you trapping? Have you got a normal 9 to 5 job getting halal income? You'll be asked about your wealth. Wallahi, you'll be asked about your wealth. And the knowledge, the, the knowledge you had. How much of it have you attained and how much, how much of it have you implemented? Wallahi, these are two advices that the Salaf gave. There's plenty, plenty more. But these are the two that I thought would relate to the youth because my brother Abbas told me there's going to be young people here. So wallahi, wallahi, one thing I would advise all of you to do and I would advise myself to do is seek knowledge. Wallahi, attend classes. Because the more knowledge you have of Allah, the more faithful it will make you of Him and the more you will get to know Him. Because nowadays you've got boyfriends and girlfriends. How did they get to say, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's rubbish. How the hell did they get to love each other? They have to spend time with each other, text each other, uh, meet up, go on dates, right? That's how they love each other. They, 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 they think they love each other. That's how they get to love each other, right? You've got to spend time. The more time you spend with someone, the more care you build for them. How, how many of us can truly say we, we spend time with the Quran, we, we, we get to know Allah, we read hadith, we, we benefit from the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. How many of us can truly say this? If you say to yourself, oh, akhi, I don't have no khushu in my salah, the first thing I'll tell you, akhi, have, have, you, have you read the translations of the Quran? Have you read what things mean in Arabic? Have you spent time with Allah? Have you built your relationship with Allah the same way you've built, you, you built your relationship with your girlfriend? And it will get you thinking. The same way, wallahi, like this, this, this will get me thinking. Every time. The same way you build your relationship with the people is how you build your relationship with Allah. Look at the Quran to be somebody, like, like, like a physical person. Spend time with it. Get to know it, A to Z, straight, every day. Take some time out of your life just, just to get to know Allah. Instead of music, replace, delete all your music and replace the music with reminders. Wallahi, I fall asleep listening, listening to Ustad Rahman. This is this, this what helps me just become fresh for class the next day. And Ustad, if, if you guys want to know a starting point, Wallahi, Ustad just started a new book today in Darul Salaam Masjid. And I know all of you guys are from West. Go to those classes every day, 7 a.m. in the morning. 
If you are really dedicated, wallahi, go to those classes every single day, 7 a.m. in the morning to 11. Basics, basics of your religion. Every, every, every week we're going for a new book. Who, who, is, who here is attending the classes? There's a couple. <laughs> I think there's a few faces. You attending the classes, right? So I think you put your hand up. Humble. <laughs> so yeah, wallahi, every week we're starting new books. This is the starting point. Don't let shaitan whisper now and say, oh, maybe two weeks, three weeks, now. Nah. Do it as soon as possible, wallahi. The first class you attend could either make or break you. The first class you attend, it can either put fear on your heart, not make or break, sorry, that's, that's a false statement. The first class you come to will give you motivation to carry on. Wallahi, that's something I've noticed in myself. Um, I ask Allah to forgive us all for our sins and let us come in a true state of repentance. Anything wrong I've said is from myself and shaitan, Allah and his messenger are free from it. Um, Assalamu alaikum brothers.